Aloha. I'm Representative Barbara Marumoto, and I represent um, the 19th House District, which includes Kaimaki and Kahala. And I have about half of Kahala and Kahala Beach. And so I have two guests today that were, are willing to talk to me about Kahala and uh, the beach area. And they are, uh, first of all, Lucinda Piles, who is a resident of the Kahala Beach area. Also, you've been a past member of the Wailai Kahala Neighborhood Board Number 3. Right. Yes, I have. And on my right is Dolan Eversole, and he is a coastal geologist with the UH Sea Grant College, quite an expert uh, on coastal areas. He is uh, on loan and a consultant to the Department of Land and Natural Resources Office of Conservation and coastal lands. And today we're going to start off talking about Kahala Beach and the fact that, well, I call it an incredibly shrinking beach. We'll be showing some photographs and we'll, I'll have my guests describe what, what they're seeing. So um, without further ado, maybe you could describe the problem we have uh, with this um, beach. Well, I lived in Kohala for almost 40 years and uh, raised three sons, spent many, many, many hours uh, up and down the beach. And uh, I know several years ago, I began to think, too, we're getting a lot of erosion on this beach. And um, then I had occasion to pull out some old photographs and was surprised to see that, in fact, uh, what was really happening was the vegetation was advancing seaward, uh, it wasn't that the beach was shrinking because we were losing sand, but because of encroaching vegetation. So I uh, have gotten very interested in that issue, and um, we at high tide along much of the beach have no uh, lateral access, um, no recreational use, and concerned that the natural processes of the beach are being interfered with. May, could I interrupt you just for a second? I just would like to explain that uh, there's a portion of the beach that is uh, owned by the state, well, really should be available to public access. And perhaps I could get you to explain just what part of the beach is uh, state property. OK, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, the uh, state ownership of beach is a very nebulous question. and. Um, what I can talk about today, though, is public access. And public access is defined by state statute um, to the upper reach of the wash of the waves. And that's um, generally interpreted to mean the highest wash of the highest wave. So by our own state statute, the public is entitled to access um, up to the shoreline, to the upper reaches of the wash of the waves, regardless of ownership. So this would apply to private property that's being submerged by these waves or by state-owned land or doesn't matter who owns it. So um, in this case, the ownership issue is um, regardless of who owns it, public has the right to access up to the shoreline. Uh, that presents an interesting problem for a site like Kahala where you have vegetation that is now growing well seaward of that upper reach of the wash of the waves and thus interfering with public access. So um, clearly that's generated a tremendous amount of interest and concern by uh, government agencies as well as the community in Kahala uh, to try to restore that lateral public access. So uh, that's one distinction I would make for uh, the viewers out there is the distinction between public access to the shoreline, which also has its own ordinances and statutes related to that, and access along the shoreline laterally which has a separate set of statutes that define what can and can't be done there. So um, you, um, uh, public access is the, what we really are looking for, and this is what uh, the people would like to enjoy, um, and the benefits of the beach. So That's correct. Thank and you for straightening me out on that one. Sure. Uh, one thing I can say, we've done a, a, quite a bit of um, research on this issue. And it turns out Hawaii is probably the most conservative state in the nation as far as public access goes. And the ability for people to uh, have a state statute here in Hawaii 
that requires or allows public access uh, to uh, a very liberal amount of beach area. Uh, and actually one of the intents of that statute is to dedicate as much access as possible to the public. Um, you can contrast that with some other states, coastal states in the nation, that are quite different and they actually allow public or uh, private ownership of the beach itself and restrict any public access across the beach down to the low water mark. Okay. So, so we have a pr public access <coughs> problem which is um, a statewide concern and not just Kahala. That's right. Okay. Well, perhaps you could fill us in a little bit on uh, Kahala Beach and the history and you were saying you lived there for a long time and uh, well, it's an interesting history. Apparently, uh, under Bishop Estate, uh, there was a very high regard and respect for the shoreline ecosystem. And uh, Bishop Estate leases, which uh, were still uh, the way you uh, owned land uh, back when we moved uh, into Kohala in the early 70s, uh, didn't allow any form of development, fencing, planting pools, anything within about 40 to 50 feet of the shoreline. Mm -hmm. actually, we do have some older photographs that we could show. There was, uh, they called it the beach reserve, and it actually had a separate tax key map and ran uh, as a ribbon along the frontage of all the properties. So uh, there are some pictures, actually there's one of myself pregnant in 1976 and that son uh, who I was pregnant with in the picture on the screen is now 34 years old. And if you look closely, you'll see no fences, no naupaka, and uh, no how trees. And that shelf there actually comes and goes, still does today. Sometimes the sand is right up even with the grass, other times it's not. But uh, there wasn't the fortress building um, that we see today along the beach and the, uh, the masses of saltwater tolerant uh, vegetation that is uh, planted and then migrates seaward, sometimes 15 to 20 feet uh, onto the public resource so portion now, of the beach. So now we have a problem with people planting uh, vegetation and sort of encouraging its growth toward the high water mark. We do. Um, I think what we're seeing is um, a trend, um, and under Bishop Estate you might say that um, the preservation and protection of the beach was, was uh, the highest goal. Maybe today uh, we have a private versus public issue. Maybe we have a resident versus non-resident issue. but how properties are, are fenced and how they are isolated um, seems to be contributing. And I think people put up a fence and then they plant and they, of course, irrigate those plants uh, so that they grow and then they forget them. And those saltwater tolerant now Paca and how plants, uh, once they are rooted, the ocean, the tide waters them. So they just keep marching um, seaward. Yeah. But I've seen some irrigation uh, pipes um, on the Mackay side of uh, um, fences well, that are inducing the growth of vegetation. I very much so. Uh, that's I have many many photographs up and down the beach where that pro those plants. Um, the one on the screen right mm -hmm. now shows a fence um, and now Paca that was planted uh, Mackay of the fence and an irrigation line that was there now that the Naupaka is fairly clearly well established then they may cap the line so if the city or the state comes out and says hey you're irrigating that they go oh no that's capped we're not and sometimes their property changes hands the person who actually planted and induced the Naupaka may no longer be the current owner and may legitimately say I didn't plant 